I'd like to thank uh, Kickstarter Backer Networks for sponsoring this video. Uh, please see them for uh, any services that they provide. We are now on to routing, so let's talk a bit about some uh, routing basics. Uh, so routing is a process to determine the best path uh, for traffic to take from one network to another. Uh, it allows for communication between buildings uh, across uh, states, across countries, uh, between VLANs, uh, etc. Uh, anything like that. So it allows communication between things. <laughs> between things. Uh, and it's based on your subnet so technically it's your subnet uh, but the subnets could be your your floor your building your location your whatever it might be when we were talking about network design that's where that that comes from uh, so routers are similar to computers uh, just like with the switches uh, they have similar hardware they have an iOS they have RAM they have uh, storage you know they have things like that they're just specialized to do this one function, just like switches. When we were talking about those, they're specialized to do switching. Routers are specialized to do routing. Uh, default gateways on nodes, uh, such as our host devices, uh, our end end devices, our computers, uh, offer a destination to unknown packets. So, uh, to unknown device, uh, unknown uh, networks. So, let's say my host, we, and we've done some configuration of this already, but if my host is trying to get out to the internet uh, in my host I don't necessarily have the route specifically for that one location so I have to then send it to my default gateway and then my default gateway will in turn send it off hopefully to where it's supposed to go most likely he'll then send it to his default gateway and so on and so on until we get to where we're supposed to go often your default gateway is some sort of router. It's your, it'll hopefully make some sort of decision uh, otherwise you know, your traffic's not going to be getting where it needs to go. Uh, so all devices, all routers, uh, all interfaces that we're going to be communicating to need to be configured with an IP address of some kind. That's uh, how we uh, got into it with the last uh, video with layer 3 switching. We have to create either an SVI for switches uh, or physically put it onto the interface itself some sort of IP address so that we can communicate over layer 3 from our host to that interface. Uh, same thing with routers themselves. Uh, we don't have switch virtual interfaces in routers, but uh, we'll have interfaces and sub-interfaces and things like that. So routers work by looking at their uh, route table. So they, they check the destination IP and they check that uh, IP against their route table. They'll check their route table and if they don't have a route they'll then send it to their default gateway and so on and so on. And in Cisco land we also call that the gateway of last resort or the catch-all route the quad zero route, uh, and so on. So some of the basic steps it goes through, uh, so let's say my host was trying to communicate to the internet of some kind, and I end up having to go through my router. So my computer puts uh, my source and destination IP into a packet header. The computer looks at its ARP cache. Remember we were talking about the ARP cache uh, for the MAC address of that router's interface that's next to me. Uh, it'll do an ARP request, which we saw, if it's not there, so that I then put that into my ARP cache and I'll put that into my layer 2 frame. So my layer 2 header will then have source and destination to get across this link. I'll send it to my router. The router will read the destination MAC, make sure it's destined for his interface and that's actually where it's supposed to go. It'll strip that off and it'll read the destination IP. 
router will look at the route table for a match, check, check through his route table, and we'll talk about that in the next video. The router uh, then checks the ARP cache for the MAC of the next hop. Uh, so either it's going to be a specific interface, a specific destination based off that route table, or it's going to be that quad zero gateway of last resort. Uh, it'll either have that in its ARP cache, or it's going to in turn do an ARP request itself. So ARP is very well, very used in, in, this, uh, in network communications. It'll then, uh, based upon whether or not it's in its ARP cache, it'll rebuild that layer 2 header. It'll put the source and destination MAC address in there and then send it on its link to the next hop, and so on and so on. And every single router along the way will do that. Uh, so if you go into a trace route and you see 12 hops, that might have happened 12 times. Uh, routers make decisions based on that best path. So they'll take a look at their uh, route table and they'll choose the best path. So the first one that uh, that wins is the best path are directly connected. Uh, the next one that's uh, preferred are remote networks. Where we start talking about routes, so remote networks. Uh, last, the things that, that that would win would be your default gateway, so your gateway of last resort. Within the remote networks list, this could be static routes, which will win over dynamic routes. and dynamic routes are prioritized as well based on the routing protocol that's used. So for example, eGRIP or EIGRP, however you want to say that, will win over OSPF routes, which in turn will win over RIP routes. So you have a, this whole hierarchical system of determining which remote network route is best and then even within then you then have which route which route is best uh, once it gets into checking directly connected and gateway of last resort as well so this is all hierarchically based uh, if we have two uh, paths to the same network so maybe uh, we have two directly connected uh, paths or we have uh, two remote network routes uh, that are either two statics or two dynamics or something like that uh, if they go to the same network and they have the same cost, uh, they can be load balanced. So we could potentially have a situation where you have a route, a router, and then two more routers, and then some sort of mysterious bubble, the internet or something like that. And our PC is off of this, and we're trying to talk up to this mysterious cloud we could potentially send it to our router and then that would in turn go either this way or this way. So that's one simple example. Uh, the different uh, dynamic routing protocols that I mentioned there, eGRIP, OSPF, and RIP, we'll, we'll talk about those more. Uh, the Protocols are configured uh, to have different uh, administrative distances by default, and you can adjust those and tweak them, uh, which, which we'll mention, but uh, really they're, you really shouldn't mess with them too much. Uh, directly connected routes have an administrative distance of zero. Static routes have an administrative distance of one, and, if, and lower is better. So this is how this hierarchy system works. Uh, eGRIP has 90. OSPF is 110. Uh, and RIP is 120. And then there's others in there as well. There's internal versus external routes for all these different ones. And uh, there's BGP and stuff like that. So there, there's all these different ones out there. Uh, ISIS, which we don't really talk about in CCNA. Uh, make sure you know these numbers though. 0, 190, 110, 120 for these common dynamic routing protocols and directly connected routes that we uh, are going to go through, uh, you'll want to know those values.
So next up, we'll uh, I'm not going to dive into the routing table right now, but uh, we'll go into that in the next uh, video. We'll we'll take a look at a real routing table and pick apart the different pieces in there. There's uh, a couple different uh, values that we will want to uh, investigate, such as uh, we have a route source, we have a destination network, we have this administrative distance, uh, we have a metric, whatever the next hop and the next interface is, uh, a timestamp, and we'll go through all that. And all of these uh, entries that we'll talk about and uh, these best path routes that it's trying to choose, they have to be enabled, they have to be um, no shutdown. So, and I'll mention that again because that's something that keeps uh, that catches people by surprise. Uh, routes do not get added to the route table, uh, and are not available for this best path selection unless they are in no shutdown. So they are turned on essentially. So I'll mention that again next video as well. So off uh, we go to routing table basics. I'd like to thank uh, Kickstarter Backer Networks for sponsoring this video. Uh, please see them for uh, any services that they provide.